Good morning guys, I'm Tracy with Just Ticket Farms and I am at work today at Petals from the Past and we are working in our permaculture project. So I just wanted to give you guys an update. We are um, working on our hookah culture bed. We're digging out our potatoes that we planted this spring and picking some beans. And we're going to replant that with pumpkins so that we can have pumpkins for the fall to decorate our porch with. And we're pulling weeds and taking care of weeds in the berms and just doing some pruning and trimming and just cleaning up a little bit today. But I mostly just want to share with you um, about hookle culture gardening. I want to show you our hookle culture bed and I want to tell you a little bit behind the principle of it. Um, and show you what we're doing for weed control in these berms. Um, we do not spray Roundup, we do not spray any kind of herbicides, nothing synthetic is sprayed out here. We use only organic principles and practices. And um, I'm going to show you how we take care of our weeds in these farms. These are my garden partners today. That's Alex picking beans. Check out these beans. Yard long pole beans. Those are going to be fun to eat. This is Walker. <laughs> <laughs> and Lori, she's got purple, purple potatoes. Clean and dirty. We're having fun digging these potatoes out of the hoogle culture hole and picking beans. It's like a treasure hunt, right, guys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you having fun, Walker? Playing in the dirt is all I could ever want. Oh, I think there's two more good ones. I'm gonna hit the jackpot right here. Man, what the heck is that doing? Come see what right here. Oh, man. Yeah. I don't even know what these are still attached to because they don't have any potato points right there. Nice. Oh man, I'm gonna reach my hand in oh, here. Oh nice. There's gonna be a snake or something. No, don't say it. Nice. Let's see your beautiful face. <laughs> Loads of fun. It is. Mm -hmm. What you got going on over here? Just uh, some beans. Just bean picking. This is Alex, guys. This is the one who has a beehive at the farm. Get another bean right here. It is. It's like mine for gold. Every it is, you, isn't it? You just find a little bean where they all are. Oh gosh, those are good. Yeah, he's got the pretty ones. That's the Yukon Golds. Mm -hmm. oh, there's another one. Oh wow. <laughs> Uh, what is that for a magic trick? <laughs> nice. I think we have annihilated the potato crop. <laughs> now Alex and Walker is getting ready to rake it out, put the pine straw back in there, and we're going to plant pumpkins. Yay! Check out our potato harvest. Not too bad for planting so late. I don't think we got these in the ground till April. Is that right, Alex? When did we plant these? Do you remember? I think it was the first part of April. And really, they should have been in the ground by mid to late February, so. We got some. Walker's still we'll finding find them over there take a walk through the forest and you come up on trees, logs, wood that's fallen and beginning to and has been here for a long time compost and decaying. If you really take a good look at this um, piece of wood you'll find all kinds of interesting things like the fact that when you peel this back this is moist. It's like a sponge. It's just moist. 
and it's just breaking down and making all this nice sawdust and mulch and it's holding moisture it's just absorbing the moisture you'll find um, fungi mushrooms you'll find all kinds of microbial life habitating in this wood life in this one piece of decaying wood or underneath it like here you see this worm I mean there's all kinds of life found in a piece of decaying wood or under a piece of decaying wood it just makes a habitat for all that microbial life and that's one of the key elements to hugel culture gardening um, now what is hugel culture hugel culture is a German style gardening and it means mound culture or mound garden and they use that style a lot to grow their potatoes so we've created this hugel culture bed in our permaculture project at Petals and this is it right here now usually you'll find their gardens are big mounds like big tall mounds that go up but we inverted the idea because I just think that that is not very aesthetically pleasing. So we inverted the idea and we dug this hole. This used to be our burn pile where we burned things here at work. And we dug this hole out. Can't remember exactly how many feet deep we went. I want to say it was like 10 feet deep. We dug it out and we just begin to put we put all that wood ash in there and we begin to put gather in our woods out here decaying rottening decomposing logs and wood and we brought it up and we put it in we just filled the bottom of this hole with all of this wonderful decaying wood and then we came back and we we spent a couple of years doing this we just took our time in doing it we would come and dump things in this hole. We would dump rotten fruit. We would dump um, plants that we thought were dead. We would just dump the whole thing out. We would dump uh, leaves and garden clippings and wh whatever we could get our hands on, we would dump in this hole. It became a joke around here. Just go throw it in the hookah hole. And we, we would just put everything in here. It was like a giant compost pile. But we tried to keep a good balance of greens and browns, so nitrogens and carbons. I tried to monitor a pretty good balance on that. But it took us a little while to get that done. But once we got it almost full, then we just come back and we filled it up with some really good soil. We used a lot of our busted bags of black cow, mushroom compost, soil conditioner, um, we just with we just filled the whole top layer of this hole up with that and then we planted so last fall we planted with pumpkins and this spring we planted with potatoes and beans and nasturtiums and marigolds and sage and um, you just saw Walker and Alex and I digging our potatoes out and they have replanted this bed for with pumpkins for this coming fall which we'll use to decorate our porch with so hugel culture the idea behind that is is the de decomposing wood is the key factor because what that does when you put that in the bottom of your bed it absorbs moisture like a sponge and it releases that moisture back into the soil it creates a habitat for microbial life to live in that environment, to live in your soil, which that is what we want. That's what creates good, healthy soil is the microbial life doing all of that wonderful work for you in the soil. And um, it, it adds carbon to our soil. So that is the idea behind using the decomposing wood and then just, just acting like a big giant compost pile and growing your vegetables or whatever in it. Um, it works really good. It holds a lot of moisture. So like we planted the potatoes and the beans in a 
April. I think we were late getting them in the ground, but we planted in April and we watered just that first week or so and that was it. We never watered again and you saw our harvest and we've not had a lot of rain this summer. So it did really well. And um, uh, right now we're watering these pumpkins because they're new seedlings and we're trying to get them to get started, but then we, we won't water much after that. So it works really well. We're excited about this project. Um, my suggestion is that you not plant a perennial or tree or shrub or anything like that in this stall bed because as that decomposes, it's going to keep sinking in and you're going to need to add more compost and such to the pile. So um, if you've got a tree in there, then your tree will just be sunk in and it'll die of root rot. So you want to use more of like annual crops. Um, I think a great way that you could apply this as a home gardener is to do it in your raised beds. Like to build your raised beds, put down some cardboard just as a weed suppression, then come in and put some decaying, decomposing logs on top of it, and then fill it up with compost and, you know, grow your squash or something in it. So I think it can be applied in a lot of different ways and I think it's a pretty cool style of gardening. These are our berms and swells in our permaculture project. Um, that is phantom hydrangea. It's in the panicular family. When we constructed these berms, we um, dug out the side here and put the dirt, the soil over to make this berm. And then we brought in some good soil and just built up this little berm. And the way the water flows is it flows right down from there, comes right down the edge of this berm, which is like a little swell where it captures the water and it slowly seeps into the berm, um, watering the roots of the plants. So when we built these beds, we added the soil, we built up the berms, and then we come in and covered the whole entire berm. This is a red twig curly willow. It is the coolest tree. But we come in and covered the berms with cardboard, recycled cardboard. We covered the whole entire berm. And then we just came in and made slits in the cardboard and planted the plants directly into the ground. So then we come back and we put um, pine straw and mulch over the berms and that has been really great in weed suppression out here. It has worked really really well. We get down here maybe three maybe four times a year in weed and um, we have sprayed some with organic sprays, different organic things. We've sprayed um, uh, an Avenger weed killer, which is a natural organic. It has citrus oil in it and maybe rosemary. I can't remember the exact ingredients that was in that, but uh, it smells really good. And it's a good weed killer. It helps kill out the weeds. We have used a natural recipe of Epsom salt, vinegar, hot hot water and a little dish soap and we um, we get the water really really hot and dissolve that epsom salt and then just a little bit of water and then fill up the rest of it with vinegar and put a little dish soap in there there's the comfrey i just cut all the comfrey bag into the cuttings and put them around the trees in the edible forest So we've used some weed killer. Uh, Alex and Walker sprayed two weeks ago with that Avenger weed killer and it worked pretty good. This Bermuda is just, it's hard to tackle. So what we do on areas like this is we'll spray it. They're gonna come back and spray again um, probably next week. And then um, we'll get, you gotta spray on a really, really hot day so it'll burn it up. And then we come in after we've let it burn up some and we'll cover with cardboard again and pine straw again just trying to get a handle on this 
crazy Bermuda grass because it just gets thatched up in here. Look at this ginger lily. Isn't this gorgeous? It smells so good. It smells delicious. We made these dry creek beds here because it kept washing out right here really, really bad. We kept fixing it and it kept washing out every time it rained. So we decided just to come in and make a nice dry creek bed and it is working wonderfully. So as you can see, I mean, these berms look pretty good. We came down last week, pulled a few weeds, but nothing bad. Isn't that pretty? I think this is one that Hayes Jackson passed on to us. But uh, that's how we're combating the weeds without Roundup or any kind of toxic weed killer out here in the permaculture project. That is an Edgeworthy uh, guy, such a pretty plant. It's a shade lover and it has, when it, it loses its leaves during the um, fall, and start setting its flower buds in the winter time it'll have little blooms all at the tip ends of these branches and they're super fragrant i love this plant such a great shade plant but these are our berms and swells and they're doing good we haven't we don't water anything we watered when we first planted haven't watered since so they're doing pretty good I think and the weed control is not that bad just we just um, put fresh pine straw down twice a year recover with cardboard on the really bad spots we'll spray on these kind of places with the Avenger or the um, vinegar and that's how we're controlling the weeds in the permaculture project. Thanks for watching everybody. I just wanted to give you a little update on the permaculture project at Petals, the hygge culture and the berms and swells. And next time we'll talk about the edible forest. We're making some progress on that. So I'll give you an update on the edible forest next time. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.